You need to practice with the Cisco CLI. This video shows you how to get into that with both a real device and with the free Cisco Packet Tracer Simulator. Let's start with some context. This video's content matches the content that you'll find in the Cisco Press CCNA Cert Guides, in particular in Volume 1, Part 2, Chapter 4, the first section of the two sections you see listed on the left. But I try to teach them a little differently here in the video than the content in the books. For instance, I'll start here just by defining three terms that are fairly old terms in computing, but that apply to modern switches and routers, terminal, console, and CLI. Then I'll give you a couple of demos, one about how to connect to the console, and then one that shows the Cisco Packet Tracer tool and the equivalent of the console in that tool. Stick around to the end of the video for a couple of key additional points. First, I'll give you some CLI command options that I think are useful for real network engineering jobs that just happen to go beyond the scope of CCNA, so I don't mention those in the core of the video. As always, if you have the books, I'll give you some advice at the end of the video about what in the books to look for regarding the content in this video. Also, for everyone, I'll give you a review exercise, in this case a practice exercise, to get into some of the CLI skills we talked about here. All right, let's get into it. In the earliest days of computing, when mainframes first existed, the manufacturers made a port called a console port. And there'd be a physical terminal, basically like an old style TV with a keyboard on it. And that's where the computer would send messages so the operators knew what was going on with the computer. There'd always be one to make sure that there was a way for the human to interface to the computer. And that computer would have a command prompt. We'd call it a command line, but there'd be a prompt there waiting for the user to type a command. So if you typed a command there, and then press some kind of attention key like the enter key, the terminal would send those characters over this cable. It would use serial communications, that is one bit after another. So you might hear it called a serial cable or a console cable. And that command would flow into the mainframe. And the mainframe was built so that it would expect those commands, react to them, generate some output, and send the output back to the terminal over there. So it's command and response idea. So that's existed in computing since some of the earliest days of computing and some of those terms still stick around in fact. So as time went on by like the 1980s PCs became common so instead of having to have a purpose-built terminal back in say the 1950s and 60s and 70s people started using PCs instead and replaced the terminal with a terminal application. So you'd have a PC with a terminal quote emulator application. So what did it do? It gave you a command prompt. It was able to communicate over the then current serial communication ports. There was a serial port in most PCs. Those eventually got replaced by the USB ports, which are also serial ports. And so if the user at the command line using this terminal emulator app typed a command, the command would be sent over to the computer and the computer would send a response back. Now in that same era, by the late 1980s, Cisco had come along for instance, and when they built their routers and then switches, they put, you guessed it, console ports into those devices, so they'd have at least one reliable way to plug in a device like a laptop or PC with a terminal emulator app, so the user could always get a command to the device and responses back to operate the router or switch. So that's what we're talking about here. Now, it was pretty clear that that worked, but the console cable could be, you know, maybe a few tens of feet long, so not far away from the device. It'd be nice to be able to connect to that same command and response mechanism, the command line interface, from anywhere, right? So we've got this nice IP network. So over time, different application protocols were built, namely Telnet and SSH. Telnet first, less secure. SSH later, much more secure. And you guessed it, they gave us a way to send commands and get responses, but the data flows over the IP network that you see there. So you could literally be a thousand miles away from the device and still connect to the command line interface of the device using Telnet and SSH. So that's what a lot of people do today. You still see a command line, you still type a command, get a response from the device, but you're not using a console port on the device. You're using any of its normal ports or interfaces that connect to the network 
and the data is going back and forth in IP packets. Now let's look at the modes. When, when you connect in via the console like computer A or Telnet or SSH like B and C there, by default you land in user mode and you can tell you're in user mode because the end of the prompt has a greater than sign on it. And you have fewer privileges there than you would have in privilege mode both of those modes are called exec, E-X-E-C modes, which means you type a command that's executed and gives you command output. Additionally, there's a configuration mode, as you see on the far right of the slide, and that's the mode you need to be in in order to configure things, that is, to make settings to tell the device what to do. You need to be able to navigate between these modes. So some of your first commands to learn are those navigation commands. So enable moves you from user to privilege. Disable moves you back. Configure terminal moves you from privileged to configuration mode. The command kind of means configure from this here terminal, that kind of thing. And then to move back out again, you can use the end command or just press control Z. That's how to navigate around. Next, let's talk about the physical connection into the console. Here's a console cable that ships with Cisco. It's kind of a baby blue color. For a long time, if you ordered one of the devices, like a switch or router, they would have sent you one of these as a matter of course. Now, one end has a connector that looks like an RJ45 connector. It's different pinouts inside than an ethernet cable. It's called a rollover pinout. Pin one goes to pin eight, two to seven, three to six, four to five, and so on. All right, so everything's flipped to the very other end of the eight positions. The other end, it's an old style DB9 connector that would have matched the serial connector on a PC like in the 1990s and 2000s, all right? So if you wanna hook that up to your USB port, you get a converter that converts from this old style to say USB, and you can plug that in, and that goes in your computer. This end goes in the device. So, pardon me a moment. Ugh. Here's an old router. It's one that wasn't in a rack, so it really wasn't hard to pull out and show you. Now, on this side, you'll see a console port, and I'm going to flip it around just a tad. Yeah, let's put it this way, and I'll put it up to the camera. The blue label should show you the word console in there. So that's where the cable goes in. I'll put it in there. So that's your physical connectivity into the device. And then you got to power it up and get to the console. So give me a minute and I'll see you at the other side of the video. So I started a terminal emulator app on my Mac. It's called Serial and I've plugged in that USB console cable into the computer, into my Mac, and I'm reaching over to turn on the router. And you may hear the fan go, and now it's sending me the messages that it would typically show when it's booting up, because that's exactly what it's doing. I don't expect you to understand everything that's happening. It, it's a 2801 model router, so you can see 2801 near the top of the page. And it's gonna take three or four minutes to boot up. So while that's running, just to show you a few things, there are some settings for the serial line on the terminal emulator side. And you'll hear this talked about pretty often, but if you get into terminal settings here in this application, it'll be somewhere different in every app. Um, the line settings for the communications, the default that the router and switch is expecting is 9600 bits per second. It'll be called baud rate often, but it's really bits per second. And there are also three other key settings. The data bits, that is the size of the byte that's sent over the serial cable is eight bits long with no parity and one stop bit. <clears throat> so if you make those settings, that'll match the default settings on the router or switch. The router and switch can be changed, by the way. So if you've bought some used gear and the console doesn't work, it may be they've, say, changed the console speed, for instance. All right, but for um, most cases, it'll be 9600 8N1. And when that's correct, you'll see all these messages as readable. And eventually, you'll get the command prompt, which I may clip out part of the video so that you don't have to watch all the messages here. Oh, what do you know? It finished in time. It says press return to get started. And I just pressed enter. 
while I'm in the window. Some more messages are still churning from the initialization. And there you go. Looks like I used this router most recently as a DHCP server in lab, and it's ready to go and interact with the command line. So here's the Cisco Packet Tracer application window with nothing going on right now. So that's what you'd see when you first open it up. Now, if you do one of the config labs from my blog site, then you would download a file and open it. So I'm going to do the equivalent here. I've already got the file, so I'm going to go ahead and open that now. I opened it earlier before starting recording, so it's my recent files, and I open it. And you've got a small topology with a router and three PCs in it. If you click the switch icon, it gives you a little pop-up and it's got four tabs at the top and you can move around in those. In fact, by default, you'll see the physical tab which shows you a diagram or a drawing of the switch, but it's the CLI that simulates the console. So that's where messages will appear. Once that's shown, you do have to click in the window. Don't forget that step. And at that point, when you press enter, you'll get a response. Here's me pressing the enter key multiple times and I just get a new command prompt each time. You're in user mode by virtue of having the greater than sign there. So let me show you a few commands. Show interfaces status is a great command. It shows you all the interfaces in the switch, one line per interface, and shows you the status of those. And there you go. So that's supported in user mode, but the command show running config, which would show you the currently used configuration of the switch, it is not supported. And you get this message that doesn't say, oh, not supported in user mode, but that's what the message actually means in this case. Now, it is supported in privilege mode. So if we use the enable command and move to privilege mode, we can try that show running config command again. And now we get some output. Now notice the more at the bottom of the page. That says there's more to show. And if you hit the space bar, you get another whole stanza of output. So I'm just gonna hit the space bar a few more times and we get lots more configuration again. And eventually I get to the end of the configuration, which is all default config in this case right now. There might be lots more config in here than you see in that case. All right, just to uh, cover a few more things with you, there is a, question mark to get help question mark here shows you all the commands available in privilege mode if you did this in user mode you'd only see the commands available in user mode for instance there's this very popular show command that has tons of options behind it some you have to be in privilege mode to use for instance you can use the question mark after the show command notice that said show question mark which says, show me all the options after, after the word show, and there are tons of them here. We've got the more at the bottom of the page. I can press the space bar, see more options and more options. So there's tons and tons of show command options. After the next parameter, there's probably more options on those commands as well. So you'll see lots and lots of commands that start with show in your travels for CCNA. All right, just a quick word on the configuration mode to move there, I mentioned earlier. Configure terminal, watch the command prompt change. We get a message and the command prompt expands to have the word config in it. That's a hint that yes, you're in config mode. And for instance, the command host, which configures the host name, does exist in configuration mode. So we could say host Wendell Odom. And notice it changes the host name and the prompt to Wendell Odom right away. But that's not a command back in enable mode, host, question mark, hey, there's no such command host in privilege mode. So that gives you some idea about the different modes. You should definitely become comfortable moving around those modes, but honestly, the more labs you do, the more that'll become second nature. So I promised you a couple of things here at the end of the video. First, for those of you that have the books, a little bit of advice about that matching section, the first section in chapter four of volume one. That chapter lists some of the cabling options for the console. There's a figure, I'd say check that one figure out. 
Also, it lists different CLI help. I showed you the question mark, for instance, in the demo, but there's other help options. I'd say look at that table and you can experiment with that in your own time. Beyond the scope of the exam, I've got a few things in that section like a comparison of iOS and iOS XE, two operating systems you would see on Cisco routers. It's potentially useful to look at that. And also there's some comments about passwords to protect access to user mode and to privilege mode. Uh, but later chapters we'll talk about those and I'll probably have videos on those so I wouldn't worry about that too much. For everybody, you need to practice this. This is a good time to say, hey, I'm not going to watch a video. I'm going to go do some practice with this stuff. So in particular, if you don't have Cisco Packet Tracer yet, you should download it. And you should do the lab I'm going to show you here in just a, sec uh, just a second. Uh, also, for those of you that do have the books, there's a free Pearson CCNA simulator with some labs in it that's available to you if you own the books. So open up the book in the intro and figure out how to download that and take advantage of that. All right, so practice, right? So if you go to my blog, you'll find a lab that basically is the same thing I demoed here in this video. So you can repeat the same thing and play on your own. So I would say instead of waiting for this review activity, go ahead and do it now. That's plenty good. Repeat the steps until you're comfortable with the processes shown there. And it's best if you say, hey, I'm curious about that. Let me do some free play, like try some of the different uh, help options to find more information about commands. Definitely you should get used to the question mark command. So what lab should you do? There's one called CLI Exploration 1 and there's the direct link if you'd like to go check that out at my blog. To close, I promised you a command option that's beyond what I think the exam topics cover but that I find pretty useful and that is the include option with the pipe operator at the end of a command. So let me show you what I mean. Here's a command that gives you a bunch of output show interfaces, and even limiting it to one interface like this command does, it gives you a bunch of lines of output, right? What, maybe 25 lines? And there may be one piece of information you're searching for and you know that it has a particular word or phrase in it. So what you can do is instead of the command I show at the command line right now at the bottom, you could instead tack on the end the vertical bar, the pipe, then the keyword include, and then the word you want to search for in that output, in this case duplex. And that command will show you only lines with all lowercase duplex in it. And there's one line, so you get the line that tells you, hey, is this interface running in half or full duplex, as is the case there. Now, that is a case sensitive parameter, so let me respell duplex to uppercase D duplex, and there's no lines of output shown in that. Right? But you can always use pipe, include, and whatever you want to type in and search the output for something rather than try to scan around and look for it. Hey, thanks for staying with me for the whole video. It's much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified when new videos come out. For those of you that have been here for a while, hey, just leave me a comment and give me a like, especially the comment, so that I know what you're thinking about the videos and give me some suggestions for improvement too. Always love to hear that. So thanks for hanging out. Talk to you soon.